actually. <laughs> this is terrible, y'all. Don't be like me, because my eating habits are atrocious. Anywho, I did a new construction viewing today. Well, I did a couple of new construction viewings today, and I'm currently at, I don't know if you guys can see, let me see if you guys can see behind me. Like, can you see them, the builders over here in the corner? Um, I'm currently at another new construction property. This time, we actually already signed the contract. They've already built the home where they're building it, and today is the drywall walkthrough because they have her drywall up. Woo! We got a house, we got a house. Nevertheless, guys, I did want to talk to you guys about a little bit about new construction too, because you know, new construction really takes people, you know, shocks them a little bit. Because a lot of people think, you know, hey, I heard if I go to new construction, I might be able to get a better deal, might be cheaper. And some people just like things, you know, some people just like to have the new, the brand new. Some people just don't want to use used toilets, you know. I'm not sure what your what your emotion is on it, but or what your take is on it. But everybody has a different perspective, okay? And everybody has have different needs and different wants which is totally fine until you get to that new construction table and you're like whoa out there I did not know it was going to include that much so I try to always inform my clients on what new construction entails before we go and sit down with the builder okay so number one to me a builder is like a mafia <laughs> No, but seriously, they're like a mafia. Like they triple, quadru quadruple dip into your pockets, okay? So first they charge you to build a house, okay? Then they won't give you all the pretty incentives like, you know, a finished basement and an additional $8,000 and seller help, I mean not seller help, and um, studio calls and free cabinet upgrades or whatever. They won't give you all of that pretty stuff if you don't use their lender, okay? And most of the time the lender is also owned by the vendor, builder. So you got the builder who owns the building company, of course, the builder who owns the lending company, okay? And then in order for you to close your deal, you gotta use a title company, right? And a lot of times, the builders also own the title company, okay? So they actually get money from you three different ways because they charge you to build a house, they also charge you your lending fees, and they also charge you your title fees, okay? And they all go back to the builder because ultimately all three businesses are owned by that one builder, all right? Nevertheless, number one, guys, if you're building new, yes, I do recommend using the builder's lender. The reason being is because, again, they will strip all of those pretty incentives away from you if you don't use their lender. If you don't qualify with their lender and you at least apply with their lender and their lender say, you know, hey, absolutely not, I can't do your deal. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna have to deny your loan and you find another lender who can do the deal, then they will still offer you, most good builders will still offer you the same incentives because at least you try, okay? Second, guys, I want you guys to really, really, really think about the cause that's involved in surrounding when you're building new construction. Number one, when you're building new construction, just like if you were to buy a regular house, you gotta put down what we call an earnest money deposit. When you're building new construction, you gotta put down what they call a good faith deposit. Depending on the builder, depends on how much that good faith deposit will be. Some of them will require your full down payment up front, meaning they will not even break ground or start on your home until you put down your full 3.5%. And depending on how much the home costs, that can easily exceed $14,000. And they will say that that money is non-refundable, okay? You gotta put that money down, number one. Number two, guys, you gotta also keep in mind that when you're building, a lot of times your mortgage will be higher than it would be if you had one with a standard resale. Reason being is because when you're building new construction, there are new fees attached to it, okay? You got additional tax credits, I mean tax charges, some of them. Some counties have what we have called a school tax that's attached to it. Then you got what we call a front foot fee, which is basically your deferred water and sewer assessment charges that the builder charges and that rolls into it. You gotta pay that up front. Sometimes, some builders do not split TNR, which is what we call tax transfer or recordation fees. They will not split those 50-50 like they would do in a regular st uh, standard sale. So in a standard sale, you would split them 50-50 between the buyer and the seller. And a new construction sale, sometimes the buyer will require you to pay all of your TNR, your tax and transfer fees, all by yourself, okay? And tax and transfer fees by themselves, depending on your county, tax and transfer fees is about an additional 2% of the sales price. So if you're looking at like, say for instance, a home that's $500,000. No, you know what, let's just say a home that's $400,000, right? And you do 3.5% times 400,000, that right there gives us $14,000. And then we're gonna do 400,000 times 2%. That gives us $8,000. And then we're gonna add that $14,000 on top of that 
that right there gives us $22,000, okay? So just from down payment and tax and transfer fees, you could be paying an upwards of $22,000 on a home that's $400,000 that's built brand new. And then on top of that, guys, when it comes down to your mortgage payment, again, you got those tax credits, you got your deferred water charges, you got your principal, your interest, your taxes, and your insurance. So your mortgage payment tends to kind of go up when you're building new because you got so much stuff added into it. So again, guys, I tell you guys all the time, when you're buying a property, your biggest thing and your best thing to do, if you don't do nothing else, is respect your pockets. Respect your pockets, respect your budget. Do not push it. If you're pushing it, it's not for you. And be okay with that. Because most of you guys, when you're buying a house, nine times out of 10, this is not gonna be your forever home, okay? You may keep it forever, use it as an investment property, but a lot of times the average home buyer sells their home within three to five years at a max seven years, okay? Very few people actually stay in these properties, okay? Understand that you want to buy a home for your comfortability, not for somebody else's words and opinions, okay? Because a lot of us will go out here and try to buy just so somebody, you're like, oh my God, did you see his or her house? Did you see what they have, blah, blah, blah? Whole time you scratching pennies to pay this mortgage. Don't do that, okay? Make sure if you're gonna build new, you understand your numbers and make sure you can afford it. If you want a cheaper route, my opinion would be to do a resale. And here in our area, in this PG County, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, guys, they're building a whole lot. That's why our property values are increasing the way that they are. They're building a whole, whole, whole lot, but they're building small. So a lot of times, actually, you get a lot more house in a resale than you would in a new construction sale. Other than that, guys, that's all I have. I just wanted to break that down to you so you guys will know that building new does give you new fees as well. Love you all. Have a good one.